Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and today I'm going over the audio engines inside rounds. If you guys like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be going over all of the new uh, complete instruments all month long. So to begin today's tutorial, I created an initialize patch for both the uh, analog and digital audio engines. And I did this so that we could just start with a very simple, basic sound from each synth and slowly morph it into something a little more interesting. So here's what the uh, initialized analog patch sounds like. The analog engine has two oscillators, and the pitch of both is controlled in the pitch section. We have uh, semitones and fine tuning, and a glide knob as well. We can also detune oscillator 2 from oscillator 1 using the semi knob here. And the fine knob at the bottom of the oscillator section allows you to fine tune oscillator 2. And one of the really cool effects we can get is using the hard sync option, which is directly beneath the semi knob. What this does is it restarts oscillator 2 whenever oscillator 1 begins a new cycle. And this is pretty cool because it allows us to start with a somewhat atonal second oscillator, and this will um, bring it back down to the same fundamental frequency as oscillator 1 and kind of add some overtones that are uh, really great. So with a hard sync off this would sound a little more atonal. And if you click the sync option again you get the sub 1 option which does the same thing but it drops oscillator 2 by an octave beneath oscillator 1. So of course we have several different oscillator types, and we can cycle through them by clicking on the oscillator icons. One interesting one is the pulse oscillator. Um, you can control the pulse using the PW knob at the bottom. So in order for the pulse width knob to do anything, you need to actually have a pulse oscillator as either oscillator 1 or oscillator 2. So the filter has some pretty interesting properties. One of my favorite is the FM knob at the bottom here um, that allows you to modulate the cutoff frequency using oscillator 2. And this can just be a great effect. It adds like a lot of grit and dirt to the sound. I think it sounds really good. You can also modulate the cutoff frequency using the envelope knob to the right, which lets the mod envelope control the cutoff frequency. If you turn the knob down, um, the filter will start below the cutoff frequency and rise up to it. If you start, uh, if you turn the envelope up, then it'll start above the filter frequency and go down to the center. And of course you can modulate the cutoff frequency with the LFO um, to get some good old wobble bass. And you can control which parameters being affected by the LFO um, by clicking on the label beneath the uh, pink knob to the right here. So you can modulate the panning or the level. The pitch is a fun one. Uh, the semitones can be a little weird. And the pulse width. Oh, and the mix knob, which controls the relative volumes of oscillator 1 and oscillator 2. The mod envelope 
uh, as I showed you before, is hardwired into the filter, but it also has a bunch of sends that we can use. I like to use the uh, envelope to control the pitch with a short decay time and no attack. It just kind of adds a little punch to the beginning of the sound. Um, and we have a few things we can affect with the envelope that we can't affect with the LFO, such as XMOD, which is the knob all the way to the left in the oscillator section here that allows you to control the frequency of oscillator 1 with oscillator 2. Okay, so we've gone from a pretty boring initialized patch to a pretty serviceable bass sound in just a few minutes. And that's one of the real strengths of rounds, in my opinion, is it's really easy to create sounds from scratch. Um, it's got really powerful editing capabilities, and um, it's just really fun to use. So the last thing I want to show you in the analog engine is how we can make a kick drum sound um, not using the oscillators at all, just using the filter. So the filter has um, self-resonance, which means that if we turn the resonance all the way up, is actually going to self oscillate and we can use the filter like an oscillator um, where the frequency is controlled by the cutoff point. So you can see I've turned the oscillators all the way down and you can get some pretty interesting sounds out of this like you can go for a kind of a laser sound or whatever But in order to make our kick drum, I'm going to turn the uh, LFO modulation off. I'm going to turn the cutoff of the filter all the way down, and I'm going to control the filter with the mod envelope. Probably can't hurt to add some reverb. Alright, so that's how to use the self-oscillating filter to create a kick sound in the analog engine in rounds. Uh, next up, let's take a look at the digital engine. The digital engine uses FM synthesis, which makes it very easy to create richly harmonic sounds um, that are pretty expressive. But in my opinion, it's a little harder to use than um, traditional subtractive synthesis. So we have a total of three oscillators, and they work together as shown in this diagram here. We have two different options, and the first one is that both oscillator 1 and oscillator 2 are controlling the frequency of our carrier oscillator. Our second option is that oscillator 1 modulates the frequency of oscillator 2, which then modulates our carrier. We can also select an oscillator to um, control its frequency with its own output using the feedback knob here. So you can select whichever oscillator you like using the diagram by clicking on either 1, 2, or C. And too much feedback will create noise. It's nice to find a middle ground around the halfway mark. So the pitch for the carrier oscillator is controlled in the pitch section, and then each oscillator 1 and oscillator 2 have a section for controlling their pitch independently. Um, we can use ratio mode or interval mode. Interval mode is kind of your standard um, synth setup where you can detune the oscillator by semitones and by fine tuning. And ratio mode is a little more open-ended. It gives you a frequency based on a ratio um, compared to the carrier oscillator. So with a ratio of 1, you're going to have exactly the same frequency. 
um, with a ratio of 2, you'll double the frequency, which is the same as going up by an octave. Um, and with a ratio of 4, you'll be going up by 2 octaves. And the OP out knob allows you to hear uh, oscillators 1 and 2, which can just allow you to create a richer sound pretty easily. So one thing that FM synths do really well is kind of mimic very natural sounds such as um, metallic instruments or um, plucked strings, stuff like that. And one facet of these types of sounds is that the higher frequencies in those sounds decay faster than the lower frequencies which means that the initial pluck of a string might be pretty bright, but the brighter harmonics fade out pretty quickly. So in order to mimic that, we can use an envelope connected to our filter. So these precise ratios of 2 and 4 are not something you're really going to get out of a natural sound either. It's better to use something off from an exact octave interval. And to do so, you're probably going to end up wanting to turn down the amount of FM that goes from each oscillator. So in my opinion and experience, uh, FM synthesis is a lot more chaotic in a way than subtractive synthesis. Um, it requires a lot more uh, trial and error from the user, at least it did for me, um, until you can just kind of get used to how things work. It's not always very intuitive um, how frequency modulation affects a sound, but um, I think it pays off in terms of the richness of the sounds that you can get. Alright, so that's how to use the digital engine. And the next thing I wanted to cover is the macros and control area. So you can access the control area by clicking on the control button at the top of the screen interface here. And you'll see we have these eight macro knobs at the top of the control screen. To assign a macro knob to control another knob on the interface, simply click the label beneath the knob and then click on the knob that you would like to control. The label gains a color, a number, and a name that tell you which knob is being controlled by the macro. If you select a knob from engine 1, either the analog or digital engines, you can use that macro knob to control the other knobs of the same name um, using the multi-edit area beneath the macros. And you can also invert the connection between the two knobs by clicking on the link area again, which can create some pretty nifty effects. So a single macro knob can control up to eight knobs of the same name within the same engine. To remove the connection um, that a macro has, you can simply click on the uh, label and hold until the area goes blank. So macros are used to pretty good effect in many of the uh, provided snapshots with rounds.
can also use the multi-edit area to rapidly edit all knobs of the same name within the same engine. Um, and to do that, you simply click on a knob on the interface, and then you can right-click on the multi-edit area and draw in the new values. So this is a great way to rapidly edit all of the sounds within a single engine, um, especially if they are very similar sounds. It can be very easy to use. So the last thing I wanted to talk about today is using MIDI control over the macro knobs. Since all of the knobs and rounds are created using mouse areas um, rather than the built-in reactor knobs, they don't work for um, MIDI assignment in the same way that a uh, normal reactor knob would. As far as I understand, you need to use automation inside your DAW in order to automate any of the knobs in rounds via MIDI. And in order to do this, I've got it loaded up in Ableton Live, and I'm going to click the configure button. Then so we can click on the knobs one by one to add them to the panel. And once we're done, we can turn configure off and we'll select the MIDI button in the upper right hand corner up here. And then we can select the um, knobs from the Ableton interface and simply turn a uh, MIDI control knob and take control of the knobs like that. So while this might seem a little convoluted, um, the reality is, is I'm pretty sure they would never have been able to build the macros to work the way, the way they do without using the uh, mouse areas instead of the built-in reactor knobs. So I think it's just a necessary evil um, in order to get all the functionality that we want out of rounds. All right, so once again, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. I'll be going over rounds for the rest of this month, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them later.